Well, I decided to add a third segment to lecture 49, and it's concerning the same example 8-9-A. Okay, again, same example 8-9-A. Cooling coil and everything else the same. Everything is the same. However, now I want you to use your calculator. I want you to use your, the solver in your calculator to find the temperature inside the CCR when we use cooling coil. Well, nothing changes. The mole balance is the same. The energy balance is the same as the one we derived in the segment two. And the only thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna equate this part of the equation. Come on. You're gonna equate it into this part of the equation in your calculator. And then of course you'll have an initial guess for T and the initial guess for T should be somewhere above the feed temperature, of course, right? Remember the feed temperature was around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So you should guess should be above this, let's say 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But of course you need to enter it in Rankin to get the, uh, so it will be the right uh, unit. Okay, so you'll do that in your calculator by equating these, the right, two right hand sides together with the initial guess. And you'll get the solution in your calculator. You'll get this solution in your calculator. T equals 561 Rankin, and then you can convert it to Fahrenheit using the conversion equation. And of course, then you can plug in this number. You can plug in this number, 561, into this equation. Demo, and then you will get this number for the conversion. So all of this without using Excel, just using your calculator. Okay, that was fast and quick. Now we have one last thing to discuss in this example. That is, you will say, okay, if I use the cooling coil, the temperature inside the CSTR will be 100. 04 Fahrenheit, although the constraint is limiting me to a temperature of 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means I can actually operate at temperature higher than 102 Fahrenheit, which means if I do so, I'll get conversion higher than 33.6%. And this is correct. So how can you, what can you do in order to operate at a temperature higher than this. Well, still you need the cooling coil, of course, right? Can you think with me what other solutions you have? Well, what you can do is reduce the flow rate, the mass flow rate of the coolant. Because if you reduce the mass flow rate of the coolant, then simply the temperature of the coolant will increase. So it was, you know, TA naught is 85 degree Fahrenheit and you're maintaining it at 85 degree Fahrenheit because the flow of the coolant is very large. Its heat capacity is very large. However, if you decrease the flow, the heat capacity of the coolant, the total heat capacity of the coolant will reduce and therefore its temperature will increase and therefore it will remove less heat so ta2 will be higher than ta1 so it will be higher than 85 degree fahrenheit and therefore the difference between ta and the temperature inside the reactor will reduce reducing the heat transfer rate and therefore you'll be removing less heat so if you remove less heat the temperature will go above 102 Okay, so just you can do that. Just make sure that it will not go above 125 degree Fahrenheit. And in fact, you can do this calculation yourself and find out down to 
what mass flow rate you can go for the coolant without actually allowing the temperature inside the reactor to go above 125 degree Fahrenheit okay with this I think we discuss this example uh, deep enough and we'll see you soon in the next lecture